And while we're finishing getting our notes out, turn our attention over here to the sideboard. Oh, the one B. Monday, January 20th of 2020. Hey guys, hope you all can see pretty well today. Can see pretty well today, cause it's 2020 today. Okay. And it's even 2020, right? We should have, we should know we should have good vision all year long, right? Yeah. As WBA students will be able to apply properties of systems of linear equations. So real world scenarios. Excuse me, that's five, that's all one, misread. That's one B. SBA students will be able to finish solving systems by elimination. So we're finishing up elimination today. Maybe we started elimination last time, which is our third and final method of learning for solving the systems of multiple equations. Okay, Mark, you have your notes. So in our warm-up. We have, a, we have a problem here that was set up for elimination. It was set up very well for elimination as well, okay? Not only was it set up for elimination, it was set up well for elimination. Everything was lined up, like we said a moment ago. And then also, why were these x's able to eliminate well again? Because they equal zero, right? And how did we know those equal zero? Negative five plus five zero. So what are those numbers? Are they the same numbers or different numbers? Okay, they're opposite, right? They're the same number, but different signs, which makes them opposite numbers, okay? So they're the same number, different signs, they're opposite numbers, okay? It's like positive 5, negative 5, positive 2, negative 2, okay? Positive 5,240, negative 5,240, okay? As long as it's a positive negative version of that same number, they're going to eliminate well, which we really like here, because that's how we got down to only one variable, and then boom, we're able to solve it. So we really like that, okay? So we had those kind of question, questions on examples one and two, and then we got into examples three and four, and we thought, well, what happens now when we had this 4y and a 4y? They were both positive now, though, instead of one being positive, one's negative. And we talked about subtracting and distributing that negative instead of adding, okay? And then having subtraction and making everything else the negative of it, the opposite of it. So negative became positive, positive became negative. And we did the same thing here in example four, Positive two x, positive two x, but we need them to be opposite signs. Or we need them to be both two, and one positive, one negative. So we made them that way. Okay? So now we're going to talk about today, sometimes we have to multiply one of these equations first. Sometimes we have to multiply one of these equations. That happens every now and then, okay? Let's talk about what happens when that's the case. So if we look at these, are these equations lined up? Do we have them in the same order? Yeah, the second one was in the same order as the first. You don't really necessarily care what the order is. Okay, we're not as concerned that it has to go x before y here. We're mostly just concerned that they are in the same order as each other. So these both have x, then they both have y, then they both have the equal, then they both have a constant. So they're in the same order. But if we were just to add them up right now, would we get rid of either variable x or y? No, why not? X does have a 1 in front of it. Can we make this just a, two, a 1? Well, if you subtract the one X, we could just leave it as an X, but then we still have one X, right? Okay, so we're getting rid of some, we're not eliminating fully, right? Yeah, that's a good distinction to make. So Nico's saying, hey, Mr. Cosmo, if we add here, will it be down to 1x? And that's less than we had before. And that's true, that is less than we had before. But our goal is to have zero. When we say eliminate, we want to get it completely gone. Okay? We want to make it disappear, kind of like Quentin said earlier, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay? We don't want them to be in the problem at all. Okay? That's a good clarification. I'm really happy you brought that up. Because, yeah, it's less, but that's actually not quite what we're going for. We're trying to get rid of all of them. So, if right now we add down, would we, we don't get rid of the x's, would we get rid of the y's? No, 1 plus 3, y plus 3y is 4y. Okay? So, what we can do, just jump down. Okay? What we can do is we say, okay, well, can we make this negative 1x? Can we make that to where it'd be, what do we multiply that by in order to make it comparable to 2x? 
If we were to multiply this one number, this negative one, what can we multiply it by to get it to where it's the opposite of two? Yeah, we multiply it by a normal two. Here's the thing, have we ever been okay with just multiplying one little thing? You know, what if we always had to do? Multiply the whole thing. So we have to multiply this whole equation. We don't have to multiply the top equation. That actually wouldn't help us, that'd hurt us. But we have to multiply the whole bottom equation. And we're going to multiply this whole bottom equation by 2. So go ahead and write with me what I have up there now. Go write up that parenthesis and put that 2 out in front of it, please. Hmm? Why did I use a 2? We'll see why in one moment, okay? Great question. I'll explain that more fully in one moment here. So for this multiplication, I'm going to draw a little arrow. And I'm going to say this is where I'm going to put what that is. So after I multiply 2 to everything, I'm going to put that over here to the right. I'm going to show you a little more arrow. Now, I have to do what math here with, with this 2? What's that called? Distribute, right? What's 2 times negative 1x? Negative 2x. Negative 2x. What's 2 times 3y? 6y. So it's plus 6y. The equal sign still comes next, but don't forget that. And what comes last? Negative 24. Now, that, that's our new second equation. Did I change the top equation at all? No, okay. Now, just to make sure we still have it lined up, I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow over here, and I'm going to rewrite this top one just the same as it is. 2x plus y equals 3. Just because we still want it to be very lined up. Now, do we notice that we're ready to eliminate something? Yeah. What, what, what would eliminate here? We add the x's. Now, Quentin, that's why we chose this 2 here, is because this made it negative 2x. If it was any other number, would this eliminate? No, if it was any other number, that x's would not eliminate. But we had to multiply by 2 in order to get it there. So we said, okay, what can we multiply this 1 by, this negative 1 by, to make the same number but the opposite sign as the coefficient for the x up here? So we chose 2. So now I'm going to put my plus symbol, I'm going to do my adding bar down at the bottom, my equation bar, my equal bar down at the bottom. Make sure everyone's still following along with me every step here, please. Feel free. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to add these just like we did on the wall up now. At this point, everything we've done is the same as before. So what's 2x plus negative 2x? Zero. Zero. So I don't have to write it, do I? Zero x, so now I don't have to write it. What's y plus 6y? 7y. 7y, very good, Kevin. Equals, save equals. What's 3 plus negative 24? Ha ha. Negative. Anyone? So now we have the 7y equals negative 91. Okay, you're right. So 7y equals negative 91. Now, how do I get in this new equation? Divide by 7. This is a nice, simple equation. I like this one. What does y end up equaling? What kind? The negative kind of negative divided by a positive is a negative. Anyone divided by seven is three. So now we found y. How do we go back and find x? Take them. Put the y on top. Put a y in the either of the two equations. You're saying on top, okay? Now, Jacob, why do you say on on the top equation rather than the bottom? Because we already did the bottom. Okay, we already did the bottom. Okay, yeah, we did something to the bottom, but that's over here. Is this equation still original? Yeah. This one over here that I'm pointing at, the black, it's still original. The red is not, but the black it is. So we can pick either of these two, and Jacob's saying the bottom one, cool, I think it's a great choice, okay? There's a smaller number here, okay? On this, this negative 12, or actually this negative 12, um, excuse me, the top has smaller numbers, because one y is smaller than three y, and three is smaller than negative 12, also, there's no negatives, okay? So I think that could be a great option. Now let's say Dakota really, really, really wanted to do the bottom equation. Could he do it? Yeah, he could do that just fine. And he could get the same answer as long as he does the math correctly, okay? He wouldn't even make a certain. But Jake wanted to do the top. We'll do the top. So we'll do 2x plus y equals 3. And then now, negative 3 is that y. So 2x plus negative 3 equals 3. 2x plus that negative 3 equals the 3. So go ahead and write with me right, right now if you have already. 
need another point to stop and catch up. Okay, if you need that, you need to stop and catch up. And what do I do with this negative three to move it across? My quest get x by itself, what am I gonna do with that negative three? Add it. So what's negative three plus three, Quentin? Zero. Two x is equal to what number, Julie? What's three plus three? Six. You betcha. Okay. Now, Tristan, what would you do to get x by itself? What's two x is equal to six? Divided by two, right? What do you get x equal to? Three. Now, Brock, how do we write our answer? Exactly right. Three comma negative three. So x comma y. So can anyone help me? What tell me what this is called? And ordered pair. Very good. Very good. Okay. So lesson Mrs. Warren is trying to drive home the other day. You guys have done great. By the way, in class. I know Mrs. Warren is proud of you and got some help, right? Absolutely. You guys have been nailed on ordered pair comma things. Since you brought that up. What was that? I like it. I like it. So this is the Okay. So the new thing in this problem compared to what we did in our warm-up when we did last time is we had to multiply one of the equations. Now we were ready to eliminate it and we are good to go. We had to we had to uh, multiply, then we were ready to eliminate. So in this second equation over here, guys, in the second equation, x plus or in the second system, I should say, second system of equations, x plus two y equals eleven. Negative three x plus y equals negative five. Do we have everything lined up? Is everything in the same order in both equations? Yeah. Yeah. It goes x's, it goes y's, it goes equals, it goes constants. Great. Are we ready to eliminate those? We add right now, we get rid of the variable. No. Okay. X and negative three x, those are not the same coefficient. Two and one y are not the same coefficient, okay? So what can we multiply one of these equations by? Quentin? Okay. We get to multiply the top one by three, and that makes this one x a three x, right? That'd be the same number and a different sign, wouldn't it? Okay, very good. Now, is there something else we could also multiply the bottom by instead if we wanted to choose that? I'm not saying we have to, but I'm just asking. If I wanted to multiply the bottom by something, could I? Code is saying yes. Is that maybe just because if I'm asking, I probably, there probably is one? Or you have an idea? You don't have an idea? Okay. Could we get this 1y to look like 2y? What would we have to multiply it by? 2. But then they're the same sign right now. We wouldn't want that. So what kind of 2 would we want to multiply by? Negative 2. So we have an option here. We can either multiply the top by 3 to eliminate the x's, or we can multiply the bottom by negative 2 to eliminate the y's. So I'm going to ask the question, would you rather multiply the top by 3, or the bottom by negative 2. Soli has an opinion. What's your opinion, Soli? Top by 3. Explain why you want to do that. Not a negative. He wants to avoid the negative as much as possible, and that sounds good to me. Okay, cool. If anybody wanted to do the bottom because they like that, the fact that 2 is smaller than 3, cool, you can do that. Just be careful. You're dealing with that negative. So let's multiply this top by 3. Let's put our answer to this over to the side here, okay? So, Jacob, what's my first part? What's 3 times x? 3x. Yeah, very good. 3x, okay? Uh, Dakota, what's 3 times 2y? 6y, very good. And then, Kevin, what's 3 times 11? 33, so it's 3x plus 6y equals 33. Now, are we changing the bottom equation at all? Now, so we should rewrite it. Negative 3x plus y equals negative 5. Okay? Now, from here, we can just go through and solve, right? We can go through and eliminate. We're ready to do that. So, if I put the add thing here, okay? Julie, I'm going to have you help me out a little bit here, okay? You think you're up to the task? I believe in you. Okay? What's 3x plus negative 3x? Zero. Zero. We don't have to write it. Awesome. What's 
What's 6y plus y? 7y. 7y. She nailed it. She nailed it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, Julie, 33 plus a negative 5. So they're different signs, but we're going to add or subtract. Subtract. So 33 minus 5. 28. You nailed it. And is it going to be a positive or a negative? Positive, why? The negative is smaller, okay? So it's a bigger number, but you got time very good. So 7y is equal to 28, okay? Thank you very much, Julie, okay? Um, so now, how do we get this y by itself? Divided by 7, right? And y is equal to what? 4. 4, very good. Now, can we go back and find x? Yeah, okay. Now, Tristan, we can plug it into either of these original two. Do you have a preference? bottom? Okay, sure. Why? You just chose it randomly? Well, it means, help me out here. What am I writing then? Okay. Plus, what's our y? Four. And we divide it by seven. And that's equal to, very good. Thank you, Tristan. Okay. So negative three x plus four equals negative five. Tristan wanted the bottom one. She said just wanted it. Now, what do we do with this 4 to move it across? Subtract, very good. The opposite of adding is subtracting. Negative 3x is equal to what number? Not quite. They're the same sign, aren't they? So negative 9. We add and we keep the sign. So it's negative 9. Okay? Now, Brock, what would you do? Get x by itself. Divide by 1. Yeah, what kind? Negative 3. Okay? What do you get x to be, buddy? Three, right? Okay. Nico, can you help me write my final answer then? Three comma four. And we call this a what, guys? Quarter pair. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. Questions on that? Hey, y'all are killing it. Okay. So let's uh flip a page real quick. Flip a page real quick. Okay. Now here's the thing. It says multiply both of the equations. Sometimes we have to multiply both to get this working. We'll look at this. Okay. We'll look at this here. So we say, this system, are these lined up? X, Y equal a constant. They're in the same order. Cool. But are they ready to eliminate? Okay, if we were to add right now, they would not eliminate anything. Neither the, X, neither the X's nor the Y's are the same number or different signs. Well, before, before, on the previous examples, we were able to turn negative 1 into negative 2, so it matched. We were able to turn 1 into, into 3, so it matches negative 3. Here, are we able to turn 7 into 5? Can we turn 5 into 7? Can we turn negative 12 into negative 8? Can we turn negative 8 into negative 12? No, none of those are real simple where you can multiply by 1 or 2 or 3. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to both, we're gonna have to multiply both of them to get them to a common number, kind of like with denominators, kind of like with common denominators and fractions. So what could, if we were to do the x's, what would, what would they have to multiply to? What number could they both get to? 35 is the lowest number they could both get to, the least common multiple. What would they have to multiply the top by to do that? 5. Don't write this yet. What would they have to multiply the bottom by to get that to happen? 7. So if we were to get the x's to be the same number, you have to multiply the top by 5 and the bottom by 7, right? Let's ask the same question. What would happen if we were to choose the y's? If we tried to eliminate the y's, yeah, 3 and 2, because we have to get to the number what? 24. And two, 12 times 2 is 24, and 8 times 3 is 24. Now, of those choices, which would you rather do? Would you rather multiply by 5 and 7, or by 2 and 3? Probably by 2 and 3, right? Because they're smaller numbers. We like that idea. Okay? So, if we get to choose what we're getting to, whether we're getting the x's there or the y's there, we're probably going to try and choose the y's because they're smaller numbers here. So I'm going to multiply this top by 2 and the bottom by 3. Now, what else do I have to be careful on? What do I need to have happen with the signs? They need to be opposite signs. So the first one's negative in the y. The second one's also negative. So what should I do with the second one? Make it negative. So I'm going to multiply it instead of by a 3 by a negative 3. OK? 
And now I'm going to put my new equations over here, just like I've been doing before. Can anybody help me out on what I have on the top on this one? Can you help me out on what I have on the top of that one? Go ahead. Exactly right. 14x minus 24y equals negative 44. Multiplied everything in here by that 2 and kept the minus signs, kept the equal signs, and everything else the same. Can somebody else help me with the bottom equation? Kevin, I'm going to call on you, buddy. What would my bottom equation now be after I multiply? Negative 15. Negative 15. Not negative, but it's... Oh. Exactly right. Well, Kevin didn't know three times negative, three times negative 14 on mom's end. That's okay. Most of them probably don't. Okay. We'll put it off the side. Got it. Now we have our new equations. Now are we ready to eliminate? Yeah, those y's are going to go gonzo. What's 14x plus negative 15x? Are they the same or different signs? Negative 1x, they're different signs, we subtract them. So we keep the sign of the bigger number. So negative 1x or negative x? That's way better than 29. Woo. What's negative 24y plus 24y? Zero. Zero. Do we have to write it? Nope. Equal sign. Negative 44 plus 42. Brock, are those signs the same or different? Negative 44 and 42. They're the same? They're both negative? No, they're... Okay, so what do we do with those numbers? We add or subtract. Okay, but when they're different signs, same sign, add and keep, different sign, subtract. What's 44 minus 42? 2. Now, which, sign, which number is bigger, 44 or 42? So this is positive or negative two. Negative. We keep the sign of the bigger number. So negative x is equal to negative two. So for a second there, did it look like your numbers were going to be pretty big? Did it? Yeah, it did. But are they pretty big after all? No. Okay. So what are you doing now? What, what math did you do? Divide by negative one. Very good. You're that negative. So x is equal to what number? Uh, not negative 2, but positive 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. So x is 2. Okay, Brock, we should have called. So now, what do we do in order to find the y? Kevin? Oh, okay, what are you going to ask? Oh, you have to do this. What? You have to do this. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. What do we do now to find the y, guys? Everybody at once. Everybody at once. Okay, you guys are scaring me with your enthusiasm. Plug it in! To either of the original two equations. Thank you, Tony. Cody, do you have a preference between the top and the bottom? Not even close? Okay. Maybe somebody else does. Tris, do you have a preference? Top and bottom. Okay, why do you see the top? You, you like that there's a two there. Okay, okay. We'll try the top one then. Just like that there's a two there. I'm going to honor her. So instead of seven times x, it's seven times what now? Two, because two is the x. Minus 12y equals negative 22. So we plug that in and then we can work on solving here for y. What's 7 times 2? 14, thank you. Minus 12y 
Or do we go to negative 22? What am I going to have to move across? Fourteen. I'm going to subtract that fourteen and move it across. Negative twelve y equals. Well, hey, are those both negative? Same sign. Add and keep the sign. So what's twenty-two plus fourteen? Thirty-six. Very good. And it's a negative thirty-six. So you can keep the sign. And now what do I do with the, with all the wrong where the y is? Divide, right? By what? Yeah, but what kind of fold though? Negative 12, very good. Exactly what people say. And so negative 36 divided by negative 12 is what? 3, very good. This is positive 3. Now we can write our answer, x comma y, 2 comma 3. Negative 5x plus 2y equals 32. 2x plus 3y equals 10. Okay? Or are these equations lined up? You guys are all checking me. Are these lined up? Yeah, x, y equals number. Awesome. Are we ready to eliminate? No. We don't have a set of x's or a set of y's because they're the same number but different signs. Okay? We can multiply the top by 3 and the bottom by 2, then get the y's to 6. Okay, so we're going to put the top by 3 and the bottom by 2. Or if we want to get the x to the same number, what can we get those to? 2 and 5, so we get them to 10. So would you rather multiply by 2 and 5 or 3 and 2? Prop? 2 and 5? I mean, we could do either. Okay. Now, if we do the x's, are they already different signs? Okay, are the y's different signs? Because we have to make one of them negative. So we got to say, okay, would I rather multiply... Um, by 2 and 5, or by 3 and negative 2. Okay, I heard a couple people say 2 and 5. Let's multiply by 2 and 5. We're good with either option. And you get the right answer either way. Let's multiply the top by 2, the bottom by 5. Okay, Quentin, you got me on this first one here, okay? What's 2 times negative 5x? Yep, negative 10x, and keep going, buddy. What do I have next? Yep. Very good. Then you get 10x plus 4y equals 64. Okay, Jacob, I'm counting on you here, okay? I'll move the bottom equation. Yep. Betcha. Equals 50. Equals 50. Very good. 10x plus 15y equals 50. Okay. Now, we'd be ready to eliminate the x's. Because what's negative 10x plus 10x? Zero. Okay. What's 4y plus 15y? 19y. And what's 64 plus 50? Hundred fourteen. So now, how do we get y by itself? Divide by nineteen. Does anybody in here know off the top of their head without a calculator what one fourteen divided by nineteen is? Probably not. It's not a really common one, is it? Okay. Let's not follow the calculators. Let's see if we can find a mental math way to do it. Okay. So we say if we try and go old school route, one fourteen divided by nineteen. Is that really going to help us? No, because we don't, we can't go 19 into 11, since we still be guessing and checking anyway. So we're trying to figure out 19 times what can give us 114. Well, what do we know our number wants to end in? What's our last digit have to be? Four. We're going to end it evenly, which we're going to try to. We know it's going to end in a four. So what multiplied with nine ends in four? 
One mole pi over nine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nine times one is fifty-four. Six. So multiply nine by six, make it end in a four. So maybe we should try multiplying by six. We look at this as a clue. Look at that last digit as a clue. We know we want to get this nine to a four. So oh, nine times six is fifty-four. Okay, let's try that. So we said nine times six is fifty-four. So this is the five up here, the four down here. And what's six times one? Six plus five is eleven. Hey, did we end up getting it? Yeah. Okay. So y ends up being six because the nineteen goes into one fourteen six times. The same thing is saying that it multiplies by six to get there. So now I have to plug it back in to solve, right? Okay, got about one more step to do. Nico, what would you pick, the top or the bottom equation? Bottom, I'd be all over that too. Give me one reason why. It doesn't have 32 in it. Way smaller numbers. Okay, 2x plus 3 times what number? 6 equals 10. Two x plus what equals eighteen? Excuse me. Two x plus what equals ten? Anybody listening? Top one. Top one. There you go. Eighteen. So I subtract the eighteen. Subtract the eighteen. What's ten minus eighteen? Negative eight. Divide by two. Divide by two. X is the what number? Negative four. Negative four comma six. Okay, so what was new on this one, guys? What was the same thing new on this one that it was the previous problem? Yeah, we're gonna have to multiply one number, okay? Miss Nico. Okay. This one you got it. Um, everyone else keep moving on with me here, okay? So we can still come across parallel, which is no solution, and coinciding, which are infinitely many solutions, okay? We can still come across them, just like we did with graphing, and we came across them with substitution. So we're going to work out these problems. Now, if we are betting people, which we aren't going to be, but if we were, do you think we're going to have one of each or two of one of them? Probably one of each. So here, are we lined up ready to eliminate? Are we lined up? Yeah, are we ready to eliminate? No. What can we multiply the top by? Three. Multiply the top by three. We'll get these, this three x and this negative nine x. Be the same number at different times. So three times three x is nine x. Three times negative five y is negative six to the y. And three times negative six is negative eighteen. The model will stay the same. Negative nine x plus fifteen y is thirteen. This is one where you only have to multiply one of them. So now we add because we're ready to eliminate those x's. What is nine x plus negative fifteen x or plus negative nine x? Zero. Now. <coughs> What is negative 15y plus 15y? Zero. So like I said a moment ago, we're going to limit the x and the y. Equals, what's negative 18 plus uh, 13? Negative 5. It's supposed to be a positive, but I might want to change that to a positive maybe. Anybody know? Negative 5. Zero plus zero, that's zero. So does zero equal negative five? Has that ever in history been the case? No, not true. So what do we have when it's not true? No solution. So we're going to do an equation that just isn't true. No solution. It's not when anything equals zero. It's just that it's not true. Zero is not the same thing as negative five. Never have been, never will be. Once again, if we were betting man then, what do we think this next one would be? Probably IMS. Let's check it out. Negative 5x plus 
checking right now. Okay. So this one, are we going to multiply one or both of these equations? Okay. If we get two to be three, we get two to be two. Four to be six, six to be four. I multiply both of them. Okay, if we get two and three, both two, six. Okay, multiply the top one by three, and the bottom one by two. And now our no, five already take care of itself. Now the top, that's three times two x guys. Six x, very good. That's three times negative four y. Negative twelve y. Six x is negative twelve y. Or three times six. Eighteen. So six x minus twelve y is eighteen. Okay. Or the bottom one. Plus two times negative three x. Negative six x. That's two times six y. Twelve y. Get to the top of it. And it will be negative eighteen. That is a kind of negative eighteen. Now I am. We go through and eliminate. What's six x minus six x? What's negative twelve y plus twelve y? Negative 12y plus 12y. Zero. There's negative, what's negative and positive. What's 18 plus negative 18? Zero. Hey, look, zero plus zero is zero. Does zero equal zero? Yeah, it's always true. Put me down to the equation that is always true. What do we have? I am at like infinitely many solutions. Guys, you remember those graphic organizers we were working on the other day with the graphing? Uh, it's uh, not going to be different methods, but the limit of uh, solving systems. And this is where I went and collected the ones we folded, the foldable. Okay. And this is where I'm going to pass those out here, okay? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through those for both substitution and elimination, okay? Because what a lot of times is going to happen, guys, is you're going to be given the choice of when to do which option. We're going to go through this together. Okay, we're going to go through this together um, so we know when to use which one, okay? And also so we can keep the methods straight, okay? One of the biggest confusing points in this chapter, guys, is keeping these methods straight, okay? Because we're learning a lot of different methods in a short time, and so it can be tougher to try and make sure wait, which method's which, which one do I have lined up for, which one do I have to plug things in, where do I grab, what form do I need these in? This can really help. Okay. Um, yeah. So when we are substituting, it doesn't matter how much we have in our calculus. How many errors are there in your calculus? What's the last one
Coast Road to 17 across where there's a ginger chicken walk. What it calls for is ginger root. Do any of you know what ginger root is? No? Do you know what ginger is? Ginger is a seasoning, right? A lot of times it's used in Chinese and Asian cuisine. If you go to Ivy or Coco, may not have it, but Ivy has it. It's an actual root. Okay? You use that, you scrape off the outside. you would buy a big variety of ginger root. So having a safety scent. Okay? So if I don't have that ginger root, I might have dry ginger that I could substitute for the seed. So you guys, the whole idea again of that substitution is we are doing what with what? Switching it out. Doing something in place of to make sure that it works. Okay? I do that a lot of cooking. Buttermilk, you can take milk, put a little lemon juice in, let it sit, you can do that with sour milk. Make sense? Yeah. Doesn't sound very good, but when we are talking about substitution, we're looking for something in place of. What is the first step, really, that it says? And you see around the very far left hand column, there are different steps that we want you to go to in cooking. In that the middle row, that's step number one, what does it say there? All for one variable. That's saying, what five do I have a variable that is all by itself? Do I have one? Is there an equation with a variable all by itself? Yes. Which one? The total. Okay, how do we know that? Y is all by itself. It's standing alone. Okay, when we're substituting the game, we're going in for another variable. When we have substitute teachers, we have somebody coming. What is that solution going to be? What two variables? X and Y that are called a what? Ordered pair. Okay. So now I have, I'm going to substitute that expression because an expression is something without that equal sign. So this is my expression right here. What's another word for Y here, Jacob? Did I underline? So wherever I see y in the second equation, I can do what? 3x plus 2x. I can substitute that in, so I'm going to box that out, and I'm going to say plus, rather than y, I'm going to say? 8x plus 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5, because that's what I'm substituting in, is equal to negative 16. Now I solve. How am I going to solve? What are the steps I need to do? Yes. Uh, yeah, what are the like terms that I have that are the same? 8 and 3. 8 and 8x and 3x. And when I combine those two terms, I get? 11. So now I have 11x minus 5 is equal to negative 16. I now have a two-step equation. I better pay attention to my sign. So I don't get a speeding ticket or a rolling through the stop sign ticket. <laughs> What's my ultimate goal? Get what by itself? X by itself. Now I have a positive term and a negative term. Actually, more specifically, I have a negative and a positive constant. Okay, different signs subtracting to the sign of the larger number. And I have a coefficient next to a variable. What is the operation that is happening? We're going to do that to get away, but what's the operation that's happening? Multiplying. So what I do to what now? You're right. The inverse is divide. What I do to one side, I do to the other. X is now standing alone. When I have a negative, divide by a positive. My answer is supposed to be positive. Same thing. Negative one is correct. Am I done? Why am I not done? Okay. I want to solve for 
four. Is the top or the bottom is making the name easier to change? The bottom. I would agree. I'm going to go ahead and go over here. So the top equation. And I got to have a variable. What's the math operation going on here? Give me a second. What's the math operation going on? Multiplication. Supposing you're dealing with a variable x, doesn't that mean you need parentheses? I might, because I use that top equation, I might go ahead and use that bottom equation. The product of 8x plus y should equal negative 16. What was the value of my x? Okay. Multiplying, because I have a number coefficient next to a variable, and adding to that, what was the value of my y? you have to sometimes create that variable by itself? Yes, because on your test or sometimes on tests it will say, solve this equation by graphing, solve this equation by substitution. And if you don't follow those steps or that in those instructions, it's wrong. You need to know multiple ways to solve problems. Uh, find somebody that went and did cookies this weekend. You go to the VA cookies this weekend? Like cookies in your car? You guys don't? Yeah. I oh, donuts. Donuts, cookies, donuts. So you didn't do donuts that in your, in your truck? Car, Dakota? Yeah, I didn't get So car. find somebody who did donuts in their truck this weekend. Brock did. Wait, did you make donuts in your truck? Um, huh? Oh, awesome. Oh my gosh! It's like this 16 year old thing to do. You think I did that? No. I'm too old to do that. I know that you're not driving. Jacob, what'd you do this weekend? Nothing. Nothing? You just like sat, sat, sag, stagnant like this all weekend? Yeah. Did you get sore? What'd you do this weekend, Sully? 
Which term you want to keep thinking to eliminate? So if that's a term that we're going to keep eliminating, if you want to do the opposite, changing your mind to advise or to change your mind to advise. And so what number should I multiply the first equation by? times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times now 5 times 4 is 20. So 4 times 52 is I got 4 50 cents. I got 2 months here, right? And then you add the zero to the bottom. Well, that's a good job. Good job for math. Okay. I don't really like that. Next to a miracle, what's not operations going on? 
two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? Then we're also going to do 16, 18, 22, and 24. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we're doing those eight problems. We're doing those eight problems. Okay, I want everybody to take a special look at number 24, ha ha. Uh, do we know, what do we notice on 24 compared to every other problem? It's not lined up. Oh, it's not lined up. What's that mean? Yeah, we're actually not going to do it. Not quite. Nope. It means we're going to have to get it to be lined up. Okay? So we're just going to have to up on that. Okay? We have to work on getting it to be lined up. Okay? How do we do that? We have to rearrange the equation. We practice moving around equations and solving for different things like oh. x and y. Okay? We have to rearrange the equation by moving things around. Are we live this or Like by adding and subtracting like you would normally. Okay? Okay? Let's go ahead and work on those eight problems now. Okay? And if you guys want to listen to the Q&A, but just don't let your phone be attracted to the Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, Dakota?